I ran this ginormous poll on Instagram asking followers what they wanted to see and the end result, the highest amount of votes went to guava passion fruit. So today I'm making a guava passion fruit filling and I decided to make it extra entertaining and special and unique i was going to make not only a ganache but also a sort of jelly sort of filling similar to more of like a pet de fruit or something like that so i'm starting off with some passion fruit puree and some guava puree and some sugar and i've divided that sugar into two and i'm mixing like a third of it with some pectin i read a lot of recipes that you can just dump everything right into the saucepan but I wanted to temper it in once the purees got a little bit warmer and that first amount of sugar dissolved a little bit. I don't know that you have to do this. That's just what I did. Now, I am going to cook this. Um, I'm going to bring it to a boil. And like I said, once it gets warm, I'll add in the pectin, the rest of the sugar. And at the very end, I'll add in some lemon juice. Um, and I am just going to bring this all to like 107 degrees Celsius. It ended up being a little bit more loosey-goosey than maybe I wanted to or i had envisioned in my brain so i think i might cook it a little bit higher next time i was just basing this off of several different recipes i had looked at online though they weren't specifically for guava passion fruit so i wasn't entirely sure this was a bit of an experiment for me i'm just using you can see my thermometer gun here i'm using to monitor this temperature as i'm whisking this I I am going to keep this process um, the entire duration of me cooking this on the stove even though it's pretty boring to look at just in case you want to try making this yourself and you want a reference for what should it look like at all these different stages and temperatures I wanted you to have a really good idea um, I also wanted to mention while we're just looking at something completely pointless um, is that by vision of this, I was going to do one third guava, one third passion fruit, and then actually one third mango puree as well. I thought that that would be a small enough percentage of the mango to have it not be a dominant flavor, but also guava can be quite intense. And so I wanted to temper that a little bit, soften it a little bit, and add some natural sweetness. I think mango is generally a bit on the sweeter side, whereas passion fruit um, is usually quite tart and acidic. And then the guava has a really unique flavor. So I thought that mango would be really good to just kind of balance that. But I didn't have any mango or frozen mango on hand. And when I went to the store, they were out of frozen mango and didn't have any good looking fresh mango. So I just forewent that because I wanted to get this recipe made and out to you guys as soon as possible. So I will make a note of that in the recipe in the description box, but just know it was my intention to do that. It was totally fine just with the guava and passion fruit, but I think this would be really good if you added mango as well. I also made a ganache i will show you next with a base of passion fruit and guava puree um, and i think the combination of the two things the creaminess from the ganache and then the really tart fruity burst from this gel um was actually a really fantastic combination i think just one or the other might have been a little bit I don't know, not quite as exciting, or maybe like the gelée would have been too intense if it was just this and the ganache, um, because I did also add in some different creams and the white chocolate. I didn't substitute any other kinds of chocolate or anything. Um, it was a, a pretty subtle, and so I think that having the combination was actually a really fantastic idea, and when you bit into the final macaron um 
it was just a really, really fantastic bite because you had those two different textures, like a three if you're including the macaron shell. So you had the chewiness from the shell and then you had the creaminess from the ganache and then that really nice burst of flavor and almost because it was a it's a pretty loose gelée it acted more like like a jam or a caramel or something on the like filling so i i was actually really happy with how this turned out even if it was quite experimental i am whisking this pretty consistently as you can see here and that is partially because i didn't want anything to like burn or get stuck or weird but also because i don't make jellies a lot i don't make pat de free often um i really wasn't sure exactly how long this would take or how quickly the temperature would rise especially once it started getting quite hot so I just pretty much just stood there and whisked and kept an eye on this pretty closely. But I think that if you are more comfortable or familiar with making these sorts of things, I don't think it is at risk of like burning really quickly or sticking to the bottom of the pan very easily. So I think it is something you could multitask, especially in the beginning. Um, but once it starts boiling, you want to check that temperature, I think pretty fairly consistently so it doesn't go too high or much higher than what you want it to be i as i mentioned before i am going to add a little bit of lemon juice at the very end i think that is something again i, I looked at like 20 different pat de free gelée recipes before i kind of mishmashed this together of my own version um and a lot of them were like oh just throw in the lemon juice or throw in something acidic at the beginning with everything else but for me i find that whenever you have lemon juice the best thing to do is add it at the very end or that really fresh brightness which you know is kind of the point of adding in lemon juice if you add it at the beginning, it will just kind of boil out and disappear. Whereas if you add it at the end, it will hold on a lot of those qualities that you really want. So I think personally, adding the lemon juice at the end is a way to go. But if you wanted to just dump everything in right away, I don't think it would ruin the recipe. So if you did that by accident, don't worry about it. All right, so I've got that mixture here at the right temperature. And I'm just gonna pour this out into like a loaf pan that I have lined with plastic wrap here. Um, and then I just left it to sit on my counter until it was completely cool. While that is cooling, I'm gonna make the ganache. And like I said, I'm adding some guava puree and passion fruit puree in here as well. And because I wanted to, again, add a little bit of something extra, I am using um, coconut cream in addition to regular cream. So I've got a lot of different things going on here. And I was tending towards more of just like an exotic sort of vibe. I've got some sugar here. Um, I've got some more cream with the cornstarch. The cream in the cornstarch is like actual, like, cow's milk cream um it's a dairy cream you could also substitute that with coconut cream or with more of the purees i just really wanted a creamy vibe to balance out the gelée from the inside i am using my pastry cream style ganache recipe as a base so i am going to warm up what i have in my saucepan then temper that into the cornstarch just to make sure that that doesn't get weird or lumpy so that will really help have a really smooth final result without anything um kind of weird in there 
Um, if you are not familiar with this style of ganache, I'm basically making a pastry cream, pouring it over my white chocolate, letting that cool so it's not so hot, and then emulsifying in my butter. If this feels really scary and like not something you're comfortable with in your kitchen, I know it is a little bit more technically challenging than a regular white chocolate ganache that for the most part is just white chocolate and cream. Um, you absolutely could use these same exact flavors in that style ganache. I do not recommend using my, this exact ratio and then just doing it that way again because you have the cornstarch which needs thickening and you need to cook it a bit to take away that kind of cornstarch flavor um, and you usually will use much more cream, less butter, more white chocolate, um, no sugar, stuff like that in that more basic style ganache. But what you can do really easily with a more basic white chocolate ganache is um, replace the cream with other things, purees, coconut cream, stuff like that. So if you have a basic white chocolate ganache recipe, you could just substitute out like a fourth of it or a half of it for coconut cream a fourth of it for guava puree a fourth of it for passion fruit puree or whatever ratio you want to do and you would get something that's quite similar in taste as you can see here even though i've got that really vibrant guava puree and the relatively vibrant passion fruit puree this is looking like a muted peachy color. It's lovely, but it is not a strong color. And when I add this to the white chocolate and butter later, it is going to become even more faint and beigey. If you want, you absolutely can add in powdered or gel food colorants. At this point, a little bit goes a long way. And I think if you wanted something a little bit more vibrant peeking outside the macaron shell, you could really easily add in a touch of yellow, of orange, of pink, a lot of different orangey, pinky things, kind of sunset vibes for these tropical flavors. What I'm doing here is I'm whisking constantly because this is going to thicken up pretty quickly. And as soon as it thickens up and I start to see bubbles, it looks like it's boiling. I'm pretty much just going to take it right off the heat. So this is one of those recipes that once you temper in the cornstarch, you have everything in your saucepan. You do not want to walk away. You do not want to multitask. You do not want to have other things going on in your kitchen. You want to be able to stand there and whisk this until it thickens up. As soon as it does that, I'm gonna pour it over my bowl of white chocolate. I am using white chocolate chips um, from Calibo. You can use any brand of white chocolate that you want, whether that's chips, whether you get a bar and you hack it into pieces. If you have something that is larger than a regular white chocolate chips, you especially might want to take this advice and warm them, melt the chocolate partially or completely in your microwave or over a double boiler so that this mixture we're creating on the stove won't have to work quite so hard in melting everything later. So for me, I like to just throw my bowl of white chocolate chips in the microwave for like 20 or 30 seconds. I do not melt them completely because the white chocolate chips are already pretty small, but if you have a large bar of white chocolate and you've just cut off some pieces and the size is a little bit irregular, it might be a little bit harder to melt just from the heat of this cream mixture. Um, so you may want to more thoroughly melt down those pieces. And that really goes for any ganache, not just this one.
All right, now that that is nice and thick, I'm gonna take it off the stove. As you can see from the steam here, it is quite hot. I have got my white chocolate chips. I've got my butter that is just set off to the side. And I'm going to pour this guava passion fruit cream mixture right on top of the chocolate chips. Let it set for about a minute or so just to kind of let the chocolate melt the rest of the way before I give it a really nice stir. Now, what I want to do is stir this up really nice, make sure the white chocolate is melted, things are combined, but I am not gonna add the butter quite yet. I will add the butter about 15 to 20 minutes later once it has cooled to just over room temperature. You don't want this to be cold. You do not want it to be actually at room temperature, but what we're looking for is a ganache that won't immediately melt the butter. We want to incorporate it, and I'm using my immersion blender here to really nicely emulsify that, but I want to keep a really nice, smooth, silky texture. I don't want the butter to melt. It is super important for this recipe, just like many pastry recipes, to have an immersion blender. So I highly recommend you look for one uh, for your own kitchen if you do not have one already. I like to pour this out into some plastic wrap. Um, I just use a sheet pan to kind of hold that shape so it doesn't spray out everywhere. Um, and then I make sure to cover it with plastic wrap again on the top so a skin doesn't form on the surface. If you want to just store it in a bowl, that is totally fine, though I might recommend pouring it into a new bowl to make sure there aren't any bits of unincorporated things at the bottom of whatever container you were using before. You can just see how creamy and decadent and quite pale that ganache is after it has cooled completely to room temperature. The last thing I'm going to do before I can fill my macarons is to cut up this jelly. It is nice and set up, so I'm just going to pluck it out of my loaf pan there, um, and I'm just going to use a knife to cut strips and then cube that up from there. Um, just looking for a size that if I pipe a ring of the ganache, it can kind of go on the inside. Now, because this is a relatively soft jelly, you could really really easily put this into a blender or again use your immersion blender to blend this up and actually get a really nice gel that you could easily pipe into your macarons. I just decided to go for my original idea, which is putting the cube of jelly on the inside of the macarons, which I think if this were even firmer, it would have made even more sense. I think it would have been um, just as easy with this texture to have piped it in. Um, but first, if you are gonna do that, make sure to blend it up. All right, so as I mentioned, I'm just going to pipe a ring of that ganache around the outside, and then I will stick the little cube of jelly on the inside. Because I knew I was going to have that more neutral looking ganache, even though the flavors are really um, vibrant and quite intense, you have this really nice punch of guava, the passion fruit tempers that down a bit, especially with the coconut milk, butter, white chocolate in that ganache. But because I didn't add any colorant to the ganache, I decided I wanted to have really, really vibrant macaron shells, so I went for or sort of a peachy pink color. I just mixed like all of my sunset vibe colorants <laughs> into my meringue, uh, sort of to mimic more of a, a guava sort of color. I, of course, after I sandwiched these shells, got them into my refrigerator to mature for at least 24 hours before enjoying them, but they softened up and matured really, really nicely within 24 hours, and because the gelée is still quite firm, um, 
they really did not run the risk of getting soggy, which was a really, really nice benefit of having something like this versus a looser jam or compote or something. I so hope you enjoyed this recipe and this exploration. I haven't used guava much in my home kitchen, so this was a really fun adventure. I'm so happy that my followers on Instagram were so excited to vote for this and to see this as one of my macaron flavors. If you do give it a try in your own kitchen, make sure to tag me on Instagram at Maddie Brame or let me know in the comments below how it goes for you. If you made any substitutions or changes, I'm always so curious to see where you guys go with your ideas. Thank you so, so much for watching and for being here. If you are not subscribed, make sure to click that button down below so you don't miss out on my upcoming recipes or tutorials. I have some amazing things coming your way for fall and winter this season that I'm really excited to share. Stay tuned and I really hope to see you again for those recipes. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye.